Justin reaches across Janet's body and pulls off the chest piece of her costume. Wait, what? Whoa, the TV got a... <laughs> hey, the people got a show. <laughs> they got a show they didn't even ask for. <laughs> All right, man, Patrick CC back at it again. Artists who destroyed their careers in seconds. Let's get into it. These artists' careers were never the same after one incident, whether it was from their own terrible decisions or a minor misstep that got blown out of proportion. Today, we are going to discuss the baby Silento. With... <laughs> uh, see, I already know about this one. Silento? Yeah. Macklemore, who leaked a text message that made everyone question what they thought they knew about him. In 2012 and 2013, you could not go anywhere without hearing the song Thrift Shop. Far from your typical rap song, Macklemore flexed $20 and had suburban moms dancing to his funky saxophone. That's a fire coat, I can't lie. Saxophone. This song spent six weeks at number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Mac had one hit wonder written all over him. He carried the most stereotypical white rapper image that is perceived <laughs> as corny by hip hop culture. Damn. He proved everyone wrong with his second hit, Can't Hold Us, which spent five weeks at the number one spot. This track was definitely more of a standard pop track, but two Billboard number ones in his first year as a mainstream artist stamped that he was a force to be reckoned with. However, it was all about to come crashing down, as Macklemore would suffer from success. At the 2014 annual Grammy Awards, Macklemore was nominated in seven categories, the biggest and most prestigious being Best Rap Album and Best Rap Song. After winning Best Rap Performance and Best New Artist, people were happy to see him win two oh. Grammys. Nominated for Best Rap Song up against Drake, Kanye West, Jay-Z, it seemed unlikely Macklemore would win, but Thrift Shop was in fact the winner of Best Rap Song of 2014, securing him his third Grammy of the night. But third. what would come next? Y'all imagine having three Grammys and then destroying your career. Damn. Next would shock the world. Up against Drake's Nothing Was the Same, Jay-Z's Magnum Fire Carter, album. Kendrick Lamar's Damn. Little Kid Mad City, Damn. and Kanye West's Jesus, Macklemore had Damn. absolutely no chance of winning. Everyone was betting on Kendrick since he without a big K dot. Come on, man. Kung Fu Kenny. Bro, the GOAT. <laughs> That no chance. Dow had the best album of the bunch, but Facts. wouldn't be entirely surprised if it went to the other nominees. The hip hop community was floored when Macklemore and Ryan Lewis's The Heist won best rap. What? Over, over what? Over Good Kid Mad City? Is that what he said? Good Kid Mad City? Stop it, bro. Stop it, bro. No chance of winning. Everyone was betting on Kendrick since he without a doubt had the best album of the bunch, but wouldn't be entirely surprised if it went to the other nominees. The hip hop community was floored. Sold. When Macklemore and Sold. Ryan Lewis's The Heist won best rap album of the year. The Heist couldn't be a more fitting name for this absolute robbery. <laughs> Macklemore was being Yo, Pat, you funny, the hip hop bro. community online. From get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, because you stole it, get it, because you stole it. All right, let me stop. Reminding him in every comment section that he didn't deserve to win. He felt so much pressure that he decided to text Kendrick Lamar and apologize. You got robbed. I wanted you to win. You should have. It's weird and sucks that I robbed you. I was gonna say that during the speech. Then the music started playing during my speech and I froze. Anyway, you know what it is. Congrats on this year and your music. Appreciate you as an artist and as a friend. Damn, imagine knowing you don't deserve something and then <laughs> like having to fucking text somebody that that's that must hurt much love we wouldn't have ever seen this text if macklemore didn't post it to social media which made it even worse and looked like he was just trying to get in the good graces with the public did you ever feel any way about him text message or anything like that yeah i think it was uncalled for to be 100 with you um mm -hmm. when he sent it to me i was like okay you know i could see him feeling that type of way because he a good dude but um I think for for confirmation from the world, you know, he probably felt like he had to put it out there, which he didn't need to do. He didn't need to do, but that don't take nothing away from him anyway, because I know 
where his heart is at, he cool. Despite Kendrick being cordial and saying that Macklemore meant well, hip-hop fans could never truly accept Macklemore as a part of the culture. They thought he was disingenuous, and they didn't really like his music in the first place, so this was an easy excuse to forget about him. He stepped out of the limelight, and many people suggest his music was never as ambitious ever again. He felt guilt, and that guilt ate him alive. His 2016 album, This Unruly Mess I Made, sold just 61,000 copies in the first week. Him Damn. and Ryan Lewis split up shortly after. Wait, is, it, is that good or bad? That's bad for him, right? And Mac released another solo album, Gemini, that did decent amongst his fan base, but ultimately, he hasn't had any major mainstream success in almost a decade. Yep, I haven't heard about this nigga ever, pretty much. <laughs> but unlike Macklemore, DaBaby refused to apologize to anyone. Let's go! What happened to DaBaby, bro? I mean, I wouldn't say he destroyed his career, right? Well, people people would disagree, but I think it's just taking a little hit, like a little stump. But he's still he's still doing all right, right? Or my hey hey hey, what do I know? What do I know? <laughs> Which is leading to one of the dumbest downfalls of all time. Baby exploded onto the mainstream rap scene in 2019 with his hit song, Shook, which peaked at number 7 on the Billboard Hot 100. I in love a world that song. of repetitive melodic trap, DaBaby felt fresh and exciting, providing us with bouncy and fun bangers. He dominated for the next two years. He did. He really did. He had 2020 to always to like 2021. Actually, 2019 to 2021 in a chokehold. I remember that constantly having multiple singles on the Billboard Hot 100, and he was in regular rotation on the radio. His track Rockstar with Roddy Rich was the number one song for seven weeks straight, a very tough thing to do. Bro, this song was so annoying. I keep hearing it. ...do as a hip-hop artist. But DaBaby was always known for having a bold personality. He was the type to say whatever he wanted, and if you had a problem, he was more than willing to handle it. He even killed a guy in Walmart. Don't worry. Oh, damn. Damn, don't play with the baby. It was self-defense. Well, in July of 2021, <laughs> self-defense, <laughs> quote unquote. <laughs> stage at Rolling Loud, his loose lips got him in major trouble. Maybe some that he can't recover from. You didn't show up today with HIV, AIDS, any of them. Oh, I almost forgot about this. Yeah, this was so uncalled for. Like, he just did this. He just said this out of nowhere. He didn't even need to say nothing. Transmitted diseases that'll make you die in two, three weeks. Put a cell phone like that up. Lady, if your pussy smell like water, put a cell phone like that. Uh, fellas, lights up, fellas. If you ain't sucking nigga in the parking lot, put yourself. <laughs> like, like, you didn't have to say all that. Why? Who provoked him, bro? Completely unprovoked and for no reason at all, DaBaby was thinking about gay men and what they do in their free time while he was on stage performing. He referred to people with AIDS as dirty and will likely die soon from the illness. Damn. Both statements are categorically and factually untrue. The clip was shared onto the internet and sent millions of people into an uproar. DaBaby addressed this on his Instagram and clarified his message. I wasn't going on no rant. That's called a call to action. That's what that's called, because I'm a live performer. I'm the best live performer. I'm the live show killer. You interact with your fans. You get what I'm saying? Look, all the lights went up gay straight. You want to know why? Because even my gay fans don't got fucking AIDS, stupid ass niggas. Him doubling down. Yo. <laughs> on his comments made everything way worse, as he clearly was very uneducated on the AIDS disease and the unfair stigmas that come with it. And although he eventually issued an apology, addressing the LGBTQ community, he had made countless contradictory statements after. He tried to profit off the controversy in music videos, and even kind of redacted his own apology. If I say what I say to get people to raise their cell phones and it's misinterpreted by people who watch a five second clip at home, you're not supposed to understand what's going on. You couldn't raise your cell phone if you wanted to. So you ain't supposed to be able to digest a clip. Uh, you know what I'm saying? A clip that been altered and, and shortened. Nah, I don't think that shit was out of context at all, bro. You said what you said, man. You can't get out of this one, bro. You said what you said. With a narrative to go along with it, with enough people driving it, it's going to do what it do. From here, he got kicked off every major festival in 2021 that he was supposed to perform at. And even when he did perform, he was booed and had garbage thrown at him. A-list celebrities and fellow collaborators condemned him. 
but the controversy continued. He got into fights, tormented and broke down the mother of his child on Instagram, tried to kiss one of his fans without consent. DaBaby was not trying to save face. He just kept saying, I'm sorry for being me. His ticket sales plummeted, which resorted to him. <laughs> oh, yeah, your excuse is, I'm just me, bro. I'm just me, bro. If you hate me, it's just me. Hey, man. Respect it. Offering buy one, get one free deals to fill out the venues. One report alleged that he only sold 500 tickets to a venue that holds 14,000 people. And Damn. he claims to have lost $30 million. Damn, is that bad? 500 to a 14... Oh, damn, my fault. Yo, the baby, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, man. It's over. It's over for you, man. It's over, bro. I'm sorry, man. Your career? My fault. I didn't even know. It's because of the controversy. Like what, the, what were the A week or two after? 20, $30 million. $20, $30 million oh. that I would have had before the ball dropped 2021. So this happened. Rolling out with July. I had $30 million worth of shows on the schedule. This nigga sold the bag for saying some dumb shit. $30 million? For saying, <laughs> but I'd be pissing myself before uh, December 31st. All he had to say was, put your hands in the air if you just don't, don't care. care. And all of this could have been avoided. <laughs> you think what when it said, he started saying, put your hands on you ain't got fucking AIDS. What? <laughs> the baby said was bad. You'll be horrified by what CeeLo Green said in a series of questionable tweets. If you don't remember the name CeeLo Green or his previous Who? duo, Gnarls Barkley, you definitely remember his two most iconic songs, Sending Crazy and Forget You. Crazy peaked at number two on the Billboard Hot 100 and spent 29 weeks on the chart. Forget You, which he released solo four years later, also went number two on the Hot 100 after spending almost a full year on the charts. CeeLo had a very unique voice and was undeniably talented. He pretty much only gave us two hits, but was an ever-present pop culture figure throughout the early 2010s. Whether he he was hosting an award show, his own reality show, voice acting, or being a judge on The Voice, CeeLo was loved and appreciated, until some shocking allegations arose. CeeLo was accused by a 33-year-old woman he dined with at a downtown Los Angeles sushi restaurant of placing ecstasy, also known as MDMA or Molly, in her oh. drink. The woman later told Los Angeles police detective she woke up naked in bed in her hotel room with Green. CeeLo allegedly admitted to law enforcement that he took ecstasy, but denied drugging the woman's drink or committing sexual assault. CeeLo's sexual assault charges were dropped after prosecutors concluded there wasn't enough evidence to take that accusation to court, but he was found guilty on drug charges, which landed him three years probation. But it wasn't the nature of the charges that ruined his career, it's what he said on Twitter after the case. After being criticized by people in public tweets, he decided to respond. Women who have really been R-worded remember, but point taken. So if I- Yo, that's crazy to say, I can't lie. That's crazy. That's crazy. Remember. Bro, bro. That's just incorrect. What if they got na like knocked out? Dumbass. That's the stupidest shit you could have said in that situation. Stupid. I tried but did not succeed, but the person said I did, then what really happened? If I, tr whoa, 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 whoa. So you said if I tried, but I, it didn't happen. So you try to, okay, yeah, you just, 4K, 4K. Someone breaks in a home, there is broken glass. Where is your plausible proof anyone was R-worded? If someone passed out, they're not even with you consciously. So Yo, 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 nah, 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 that shit is stupid, bro. He's literally baiting himself out. He's literally exposing himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody remove his Twitter. So, PR? He had no PR training at all. With implies consent it's hard to see what he deserves to have his career flushed away yeah, yeah, yeah nah. point he was trying to make here but the blogs were not holding back CeeLo, it's not rape if you forget CeeLo green that's insane green it isn't rape if the victim is unconscious after these tweets his reputation was destroyed he lost all of his live performance yo get this man in jail the hell bookings he quit the voice to avoid being fired his tv show was canceled yeah he basically disappeared from the pop culture zeitgeist Good. pretty much surviving off royalties and small film roles here and there but i guess him and i are friends now yo pat what's up man what the fuck uh i'm assuming that your friends call you pat my friends do call me pat so oh he on cameo <laughs> 
Yo, that's what happens when you fall out, bro. You go to the cameo, bro. Where, where did the Island Boys go? They went to a cameo too. And um, I consider myself to be one of your friends. He got him to say yo, you're, you're his I friend. Myself to be one of your friends. The next person. On <laughs> yo, Pat, you a fool, man. <laughs> on our list, lost her career from something that was totally out of her control. In fact. It may have even been a setup. What? Janet Jackson is a woman who needs no introduction. She is the youngest of the nine iconic Jackson family siblings. Although she was not a part of the original Jackson 5, she would go on to have a massive solo music career. Jackson signed the first of two record-breaking multi-million dollar contracts with Virgin Records, establishing her as one of the highest paid artists in the industry. She was named by Billboard magazine in the 90s as the second most successful recording artist of the decade in the United States after Mariah Carey. Over 100 million records sold, 10 Billboard number one songs, 27 top 10 hits, she is easily the most successful artist on this list, which is why her downfall is even more tragic. The Super Bowl in America is always the most watched televised program every year, with an average of around 100 million people watching the game. Damn. The halftime show has historically been a major milestone in an artist's career, as it is the biggest stage they will likely ever be on. In 2004, Janet Jackson was asked to do the show, but not by herself, which was surprising since she easily had enough hits to do a full set. Instead, she only got to perform two of her songs. The other time was filled out by Justin Timberlake, Diddy, Nelly, Kid Rock, and Jessica Simpson. Simpson. The very last song of the performance was Justin's hit song, Rock Your Body, in which Janet assisted him. The two met at the center of the stage to pose for the grand finale. Justin reaches across Janet's you body and pulls off the chess piece of her costume, exposing her Appreciate breast to 90 million people. Wait, what? The Wait, what? chess piece of her costume, exposing her breast to 90 million Whoa, the TV got a... <laughs> hey, the people got a show. <laughs> they got a show they didn't even ask for. <laughs> Get to see a little bit of them nip slips. <laughs> people. The wardrobe malfunction is considered the biggest controversy in televised history. This incident was actually the inspiration for YouTube because of the difficulty finding footage to rewatch online. Now, to some degree, this was planned. Justin's intention was to pull the leather Wait, piece- Wait, so you're saying my whole career in YouTube itself was instigated from this very moment? <laughs> Yo, Janet Jackson, I'm sorry, man. Your career had to fall, but- <laughs> For others to succeed, you know what I'm saying? It's just part of the cycle of life. Off her chest and exposed the red underneath, but he ripped too much. In the split second the camera was on Janet, you can see her look down in shock. She tried to cover herself <laughs> while- A win is a win. <laughs> Timberlake stood holding the ripped no, pieces stupid, of her man. costume and bra. The FCC received more than 500,000 complaints after the performance. CBS was fined $550,000, and the halftime sponsor AOL demanded a return of the $10 million advertising cost they paid to the NFL. Justin apologized, MTV apologized, Janet apologized, even though she later regretted it because it was an accident. The media went into an all out frenzy. The yeah, FCC man, it was an accident, bro. But I kind of get it. There's advertisers, there's a Super Bowl, and then you're basically showing corn to everybody watching she investigated the half you're not very brand friendly then are you but i don't think it deserves her career being freaking blackballed i'm show to see if this was a planned media stunt meant to shock the world citing that because she was wearing a nipple covering that was evidence this was all set up Class action lawsuits were filed against Janet by random citizens claiming that her sexually explicit performance deserved maximum punitive damages. Every yeah. talk show host in the nation dragged her. Viacom had to pay out $3.5 million to settle various indecency complaints. So they went and banned all radio and TV stations that they owned from playing any of Janet Jackson's music. Janet Damn. was blackballed from the music industry That's crazy. over an accident. She was. And Justin was not punished at all. Even though no wonder I haven't like listened to any Janet Jackson songs. <laughs> no wonder. Definitely his fault. There is no doubt her punishment was unfair and likely due to her gender and race. Her career after that wasn't totally dismantled. She did have a number one album, a Grammy nomination, some light Billboard presence. Okay, but this she incident lingered cool. cool, like cool. a dark cloud over her head for many years, and slowly she faded out of the mainstream. I am one of those women, women who have been gagged both literally and emotionally, women who have been abused, women who have been intimidated, women who have lived in fear. I stand with you. You are my sisters. 
However, today, most people can all agree that this was just an overreaction, and she is still highly regarded as one of the most iconic pop stars of all time. Overreacting- Eh, slight overreaction. I agree. ...into small mistakes seem to be common in the early 2000s, because this next artist's career was destroyed by something so small, it's almost unbelievable. Ashley Simpson was the younger sister of the already famous pop star Jessica Simpson, who was a multi-platinum billboard charting recording artist. She also had her own MTV show. Newlyweds, Nick and Jessica, was one of the most popular programs on the network. MTV wanted to capitalize on the Simpson sisters' newfound fame and gave Ashley her own series called The Ashley Simpson Show. The series ran for two seasons and aired every week on MTV directly after Jessica's show. Viewers who were invested in Jess were introduced to Ashley immediately after. Ashley was desperate to not live in the shadows of her sister. She dyed her naturally blonde hair brown and built a pop punk image to complement her pop rock music. Her album's lead single, Pieces of Me, became an instant hit in the United States. The song peaked at number 5 on the US Billboard Hot 100 and sold over 500,000 copies nationwide. Ashley's debut album was released soon after, with an estimated 398,000 copies sold in its first week. World she looked like Katy Perry. Taylor Swift, come on. Worldwide, the album sold more than 5 million copies. She had a bigger debut than her sister, but her career ended just before it took off. Saturday Night Live, 2004. Ashley Simpson was set to perform her single Pieces of Me when this happened. On a Monday, I'm waiting. Tuesday, I'm fading. <laughs> she lip syncing? Yo! What in the... So, so, so Fortnite dance, bro. You might be kind of confused as to what happened. Basically, the backing vocals started playing before Ashley expected them, as it was her intention to lip sync her performance. But instead of trying to catch up to the song, she stood there in a panic, then hit this extremely awkward jig dance twice before ultimately. Is that her the default with... emote? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Is that what she just does when she's nervous? Without saying anything. The show cut to commercial, and when it came back, she blamed her band. Ladies and gentlemen, what can I say? Like Is that the Jonas Brothers? And when it came back, she blamed her band. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, what can I say? Live TV. Exactly. I feel so bad my band started playing the wrong song, and I didn't know what to do, so I thought I'd do a hoedown. <laughs> I'm sorry. If she just told the truth right away, she may have been able to avoid the backlash. But instead, Ashley became a laughing stock. <laughs> that shit is funny, I can't lie. Nah, she got a family guy? W. <laughs> Magic ain't clown, man. Tough. Family guy? Ooh. Even news anchors poked fun at her. Nah. Sister's performance on Saturday Night Live was, well, out of sync, you could say. <laughs> I, sorry, we had to do that. It was just no. our own lips. No, that's a violation. That's a, that one there is a violation. Yo, they 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 did that live, bro. They were planning that. Look at look at her smile on her face. She's having fun with it. Sinking adventure. We were mocking her. At just 19, <laughs> we were mocking her. Yes. She was publicly ridiculed by the world, and this is all especially ridiculous considering today's standards are much lower. Yeah, it everybody feels like fucking, lip bro. Everybody's freestyle like I mean, lip syncs. I went to a concert. The nigga was just playing his song, and he was just saying, "Yo, like at." lives his own song bro syncing isn't even a real thing anymore half of my favorite artists at their live shows just let the song play jump uh, around and uh, yell yeah. random ad libs uh, even though Ashley was a decent performer and she did have an opportunity to redeem herself on various late night shows nobody cared nobody wanted to give her a second chance it was too much fun to make jokes and boo her off stage ah. tough man that, that shouldn't be justified, bro, but I guess lip syncing lip back then was a big deal, wasn't it? Everything had to be live. Moderate comeback with her single Boyfriend in 2005, and her second album eventually selling 3 million copies worldwide, but she had already seen the peak of her music career, and as it slowly dwindled away, she maintained her relevance in the 2010s through relationships, various television projects, and her own social media. But the last person on our list has the most unexpected, shocking, and horrifying incidents that landed them in prison 
In 2015, the world was dancing to Silent Ho's hit song, Watch Me. The song paired with the massive viral dance, the whip and the nene. All of social media was flooded with videos of people doing the dance. With Vine and- Yeah, bro. This nigga killed his cousin. I'm sorry. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Instagram peaking in popularity, I know Silent about Hill laid the foundation for what would become extremely normal now on TikTok with. many years later. He performed at award shows, on Nickelodeon, every talk show in America. The virality got the single to number three on the Billboard Hot 100, as well as 1.8 billion views on YouTube. God damn, it was that big? Today, the record is six times platinum. Unfortunately, hip-hop dance tracks have a history of being impossible to outdo, because for every one that becomes culturally iconic, there are hundreds of cheesy failed attempts to recreate the moment. True. Silent Hill waited three years to drop his album fresh out of high school, which failed to generate any buzz, and his second album went almost totally unnoticed. But before you could fully count him out, he made a decision that officially ended his career. Oh, this brings back so much nostalgia. Watch me whip. Don't watch me did it. I gotta go watch, uh, listen to that now. <laughs> 21st, 2021, the 23 year old rapper was arrested for the murder of his cousin, 34 year old Frederick Rooks, after a shooting in DeKalb County, Georgia. Why? Police said officers found Rooks That's suffering cousin, from multiple bro. gunshot wounds at a home off of Deep Shoals Circle. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Investigators did not have a suspect at the time. Responding officers were able to obtain video from the security cameras of multiple residents and later identified Hawk, or Silento, as the gunman. Silento was arrested February. 1st, 2021, and then later indicted by a Georgia grand jury on four felonies. One count of malice murder, one count of felony murder, aggravated assault, and gun possession during the commission of a felony. As of now, the court has deemed Silent Hill unfit for the safety of the public and will remain incarcerated until further trial. Since the trial has not started yet, we don't know how he did it, we don't know why he did it, and we don't know how long he might don't be know in shit. jail, but we do know is that his career is, is over it's over it's donezo yo pat cc wvid again